Uh, it falls to me to uh, kick off uh, this morning's proceedings with some framing comments. And let me begin by saying this is a very good week in which to be talking about gender empowerment via ICTs. I say that because yesterday the Commission on the Status of Women reached an outcome promoting women's equality and gender empowerment, and I congratulate uh, the Head of UN Women through her representative here, uh, Gulden, uh, on this outcome of the CSW. It wasn't uh, a fait accompli that there would be an outcome, and many people worked very hard for this, led by Michelle Bachelet, who we're very sorry to be losing from the UN system, by the way. Uh, so that's the fir first point. The second point is, as uh, Irina was kind enough to note, I was in Mexico City this week for the launch of the Human Development Report uh, 2013. Uh, the President of Mexico himself presided at the launch. Uh, the report is on the rise of the South and it's looking at the emergence and transformation of fast-moving developing countries. One of the key tools, of course, is connectivity, ICT, innovation uh, in development. And the report uh, most certainly comments on areas which are very relevant to the work of the Broadband Commission and with respect to gender, identifies gender inequality as one of the ceilings which countries are hitting in trying to take their development forward. If you exclude half the world's population from the full potential of their country's development, of course, you will never reach your full national potential. So I, I recommend and it's uh, available online, uh, hdr.undp.org, uh, to everyone when you have a, a spare moment. So, it was back in September uh, last year at the Broadband uh, Commission meeting uh, that Gina Davis challenged the Commission. And when Gina challenges you, you sit up and take notice. And gender said, Gina said, please, Broadband Commission, set up a working group on gender. Uh, look at the gender gap in access to ICTs and broadband. And Gina, of course, has also done uh, wonderful work looking at uh, the stereotyping and less than positive uh, images of women often portrayed in, in media and is also very keen to see women and girls going into careers in technology. So the idea was get this group going and let's see uh, where we can uh, take gender equality forward in uh, ICTs. Now, of course, uh, we immediately run up against the, the broader issues around uh, gender uh, equality. Uh, but in a world where ICTs empower, as Dr. Sanu has so aptly said, to deny the opportunity of equal access to ICTs to women and girls, of course, stands in the way of their empowerment uh, in reaching gender equality, let alone, as I said, of their countries uh, reaching their full potential. So, this working group, uh, with all the knowledge that it has, as uh, ITU has said, has the opportunity to identify some of the innovative strategies which might see ICTs more effectively harnessed in support of women's empowerment and gender equality. And I truly believe, as I know you all do, that ICTs can help transform the lives of women and their families and be catalytic for development. And in the UN Development Program, being very practical people, we're always looking for what are the practical aids that these technologies can be in uh, development. Now, everyone here is very familiar with all the facts and figures around ICTs, uh, that they have become indispensable tools for participation in modern society and economies. That's why the gender gap matters so much. If 21% uh, fewer women uh, own mobile phones than men do, they are put at a disadvantage in today's world. And, of course, the uh, figures, uh, the disparities uh, there uh, are rather larger than that, uh, that average for developing countries, reaching a 37% gap in South Asia, for example. Quite a serious uh, gap. Now, the growth in smartphones, as we all know, is exponential, uh, giving uh, connectivity to the web. We all want women to be able to ride the wave of the smartphone uh, expansion and roll out too. Uh, again, uh, we understand that in developing countries around a quarter fewer women have access to the internet, and in sub-Saharan Africa, that gap increases to about 45%. This is a serious gap. 
why does it matter? Well, for all the reasons this very well-informed group is so familiar with. ICTs enable people to have voice, to participate, to have more impact on the decisions which impact their lives. ICTs give access to vital and essential services and information. ICTs can economically empower. ICTs can increase social interaction. And we have many examples in development across all these aspects of ICT empowerment, whether it is the work of UN Women in Ecuador to train rural women leaders to use ICTs to access information, request forms and submit projects to their governments, uh, enabling them then to get concrete improvements in their lives through better sanitation, housing and drinking water and lift their profile as leaders in their communities. We've seen the impact for women of ICTs on addressing maternal health. Look no further than Uganda, where personal digital assistants are supporting rural healthcare workers via the local cell phone network to get access to health information and data collection and analysis. So many examples in the economic empowerment area Go no further than Kenya with M-Pesa, which everyone is so familiar with, uh, and the mobile banking and financing opening up new opportunities for women entrepreneurs. And what a difference it makes not to have to carry sizable sums of money in situations which are not always safe. Inclusive finance through mobile banking has huge advantages in many ways. And then we are also seeing the potential to work for more food security and better nutrition uh, through the, the messaging and information delivery uh, through ICTs in developing countries. So we all see these opportunities. We see the uh, implications. Uh, we see the feedback from women themselves. Uh, one survey showing four in ten women in low and middle income developing countries saying yes, we have had increased economic or professional opportunities because we owned a mobile phone. Uh, very uh, important uh, finding. So, as we go about our work, uh, let's be mindful of some of the long-standing inequalities which are standing in the way, because we have to then have strategies which are going to also uh, work, work our way through these barriers. The attitudes, for example, in a number of societies which are uh, not conducive to women owning and operating productive assets. Women's lack of control over financial resources or even their own mobility in a number of societies. Constraints on personal uh, security in many places. The burden of unpaid care work uh, for women uh, and unequal access to education. This is the context for many of the people in this digital divide at the current time. Uh, meaning, for example, opening a public access technology centre won't help women if the hours of operation are too late for women to travel there safely or if women don't feel comfortable using a centre because the staff are only men or there are no designated bathrooms for the women. We have to think very practically around uh, these issues. Now, uh, in development, we very much see ICT rollout as a means to an end. Uh, we see the importance of going beyond uh, uh, closing the digital divide to closing the service and the information divide as well. We think the deployment and rollout of ICTs needs to be linked to the real challenges faced on the ground, and this working group is focusing on the challenges for women. Uh, we need rollout of the technologies, but we need rollout with equity of access and access to services. Uh, in development at the UN, we talk about MDGs with equity. I think this working group is focused on broadband with equity for women.